Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. I hope all of you are having a great day out there. As always, over the past 24 hours, we have seen a major, major dip in a majority of cryptocurrencies out there resulting in nearly $400 billion worth of cryptocurrency market cap to essentially disappear. And in this video, I wanna talk about exactly what's happening when it, in regards to this cryptocurrency dip that we're seeing, the potential reasons behind it, what I'm doing, my thoughts on cryptos over the long run, and other things along those lines. So if you find any value in this video whatsoever, please consider subscribing and let's get into the video. First and foremost, I wanna talk about Brian Kelly. And the only reason I'm mentioning his name, he's a Bitcoin bull. He was actually on CNBC a couple of hours ago and I watched the clip and it was actually pretty interesting because of a lot of the points that he made are actually uh, kind of in line with what my opinions are as to the drop we've seen in cryptocurrencies and other things regarding cryptocurrencies that might affect them over the coming days, weeks, months, or even years. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of the points, elaborate on them, and give you guys my opinion on them overall. When we talk about the major sell-off that we've seen across all cryptocurrencies this morning, he pinpoints this reason to two things. One, margin calls, and because of that, liquidation. When we talk about margin, what is margin? It's essentially taking a loan out against your cryptocurrency to potentially buy even more cryptocurrency. Now, what does this look like? Let's say you have a dollar in Bitcoin, all right? And what you do is say, you go to your brokerage and say, all right, I have $1 in Bitcoin. I'm gonna borrow another dollar of Bitcoin. So now I have $2 in Bitcoin. Now, what happens then, if your Bitcoin, or the value of your total Bitcoin, so if the value of those $2 goes under a buck, the brokerage has the right to liquidate your portfolio by selling everything. And what happens in these situations, if potentially something like a Bitcoin falls dramatically in a short amount of time, we have a lot of these margin calls happening at a certain time, it potentially, you know, this morning we saw a major, major dip in a very, very short amount of time. And these kind of just trigger each other. So we have a margin call here that leads to another margin call that leads to another margin call. And that is one of the main reasons as to why we saw this major, major dip this morning, because obviously you have these margin calls transpiring. Some people can't deposit money quickly enough because of how Bitcoin uh, has fallen so quickly. And we have a situation where these brokerages liquidate the, their Bitcoin, their Ethereum, their cryptocurrencies, and that results in even more selling pressure, which obviously forces the price to go down. Now, at the same time as this happened, the exchanges faced so much volume that they couldn't handle it and shut down, which is why we saw pretty much every single crypto brokerage out there, Voyager, Coinbase, Binance, uh, you know, I don't know if Kraken went down, but nearly every single one went down because of this spike in volume due to these margin calls and due to this liquidation. Now, the thing is, this uh, kind of margin calls and these liquidations don't fundamentally change the case when it comes to Bitcoin. And this is Brian's next point here. The number one thing you should ask yourself when investing in stocks and crypto, and if that, you know, whatever that asset is, if it goes down in price, the first thing you got to ask yourself, has my thesis changed? Has something changed fundamentally with the company that now makes me look at it from a different angle? In the case of Bitcoin and in the case of cryptocurrencies, Brian Kelly's thesis is two things, institutional adoption, and number two, a hedge against currency inflation. In his mind, none of those two things have changed in the past 24 hours, which is why he likes to be a buyer in this type of situation. And I don't think this is just something that is parallel with cryptocurrencies, but also with stocks. Whenever something falls, whether it's a slight move downwards or whether it's a major move downwards, the first thing you should be asking yourself is, has my thesis changed? Has the company fundamentally changed in any way? Has the cryptocurrency changed in any major way? With cryptocurrencies, with Bitcoin, the fundamental uh, kind of thesis behind Bitcoin and behind Ethereum, behind the, you know, I don't know, Dogecoin hasn't changed whatsoever. All we had was a sell-off, which is inherent with cryptocurrencies. If you're buying into any crypto, you should be expecting volatility and not just that, you should be embracing this volatility as an opportunity to get in because as fundamentals improve, you have a situation where the stock goes up, down and sideways to a point where whenever it falls in a massive, massive way, 
that's an opportunity to get in. And that's one of the important things that I like to teach is always keep a certain amount of cash on the sidelines to buy dips. And I think that's especially important with Bitcoin, with other cryptocurrencies to have cash on the sidelines because Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano tends to crash in a massive, massive way in a short amount of time for no reason and then generally like to uh, bounce right back after that dip transpires, right? And that's why one of the most important things is holding cash on the sidelines and being able to take uh, advantage of these opportunities when they do end up coming. Now, uh, next thing you touched on here, and I think this is very interesting, is cryptocurrency and is Bitcoin vulnerable to Elon Musk? How is that a problem? And, uh, you know, what's very interesting is that Elon Musk over the months and over the years has voiced certain concerns or, you know, potentially has helped out the cryptocurrency market. The thing is, he has been a market mover. Now, when we talk about Bitcoin moving on potentially a tweet or a potential action from Elon Musk, that shouldn't be happening. You know, Bitcoin's obviously decentralized. It isn't a uh, controlled by any one central authority. And you know what Elon Musk's opinion is shouldn't move the market. So what Brian Kelly said, and I think this is very, very important, is that Bitcoin has to get over what Elon Musk says to become a dominant global currency. And I couldn't agree with this more. I think Bitcoin has to get over, you know, what opinions are from, uh, you know, obviously Elon Musk to really become their own digital currency, obviously in a global environment. So this is a vulnerability in the short term that it does react to these tweets and to these opinions. But over the longer run, we do expect it to, you know, kind of brush off a lot of these opinions from someone like an Elon Musk and really focus on the sole fundamentals of the cryptocurrency as a whole. It doesn't really help that, you know, they're inherently volatile at this moment as well to where it's almost like cryptocurrencies are looking for something to be volatile for. So in this case, if, you know, some Elon Musk says something good or something bad, that can cause a massive spike in certain cryptocurrencies or the crypto market as a whole. Last thing, price action. We saw some nice price action today when it comes to Bitcoin. It did bounce off of some major resistance at in and around $29,000. It didn't bottom out there. That's the resistance, though. It bottomed out in and around $30,000 and has, uh, you know, moved up a little bit. Uh, we'll take a look at the chart in a moment here. But again, it just goes back to the same thing we talked about earlier. Nothing has fundamentally changed with Bitcoin, but the price has moved down. And when we talk about what Brian Kelly thinks about the situation, it reminds him of exactly what he saw in March, where there was a major overreaction in the stock market and in the cryptocurrency industry to where, uh, you know, kind of the fundamentals of everything wasn't down to a level at where the stock market and where the cryptocurrency market was at that time. And if something what we've seen currently with the price of Bitcoin, with the price of different cryptocurrency assets, it should present a nice buying opportunity for anyone willing to buy or for someone who has cash on the sidelines. Now, next thing that I want to take a look at with you guys is exactly what's happened with cryptocurrency prices across the board and dive a little deeper into exactly what's happening with them. Obviously, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Cardano fell massively this morning, have rebounded a little bit, though. We're going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart. In my opinion, it's almost no argument that Bitcoin at this moment in time is the face of the cryptocurrency industry and is most associated with cryptocurrencies as a whole. Obviously, hitting $30,000 here today, now trading at around $36,000. And we'll see, we saw a major dip at in and around 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is when a lot of those margin calls occurred. This is when we saw a lot of that liquidation and essentially creating a spiraling effect where one triggered another, which triggered another, which triggered another, which triggered this massive, massive decline that resulted in essentially a spike in volume. And a lot of these exchanges couldn't handle that volume, which is why we saw a lot of brokerages go down in the process. Now, what's phenomenal about this dip here is that a lot of these coins are continuing to, you know, kind of drift a little lower and not completely rebound something like a Cardano here, which is a very interesting coin. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit about it in a second here. You know, it obviously rebounded to upwards of a dollar 83 cents. Now it's down back down to around a dollar 50. So it's not like the opportunity is over with a lot of these cryptocurrencies to buy the dip. And, you know, the phenomenal thing here is, uh, you know, with a lot of these cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, the best time to buy an asset, in my opinion, is when the price goes down 
and when we see fundamentals either improve or stay stagnant. And what we're seeing with cryptocurrencies is the prices of all of these decrease while the fundamentals continue to improve. That is phenomenal. And I think that presents a phenomenal buying opportunity. And when we look at cryptocurrencies as a whole, I think we can really separate them into two main categories. One, Bitcoin, a store of value, a finite amount of Bitcoins out there. And, uh, you know, essentially when we talk about a store of value coin, Bitcoin has won it. They've won that name and they will probably be the store of value moving forwards. But the thing about Bitcoin, their transaction time sucks. 15 to 20 minutes to essentially create a block, which means that if you go to a Walmart or any other store and want to use Bitcoin, you got to wait 15 to 20 minutes at the cash register for your uh, essentially payment to go through. That sucks. What Ethereum, what Cardano, what Polkadot are trying to do is be a currency that you use on a daily basis, much less transaction times, much less fees. When we look at this kind of market here, I think that is where a lot of opportunity will come over the coming uh, kind of months and years here as the cryptocurrency market expands. And you know, I'm making a full analysis on Cardano. It will take me a little bit of time to make over the next couple of days here, but I do think it has a lot of potential at its current market cap to really take on Ethereum as that form of a digital dollar. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here. If you found any value in it whatsoever, please consider subscribing and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.